corn. He said, love me, love my horse, Barney Google, with his good, good, googly eyes. I was already just a small farmer. We were farming in the hills, and I couldn't use a big disc or a big plow. But uh, most of my farming was done with four horses. One was Barney. That's right. And, uh, we had Bill. Bill. Bill and Barney, they was together. Then Gosh. we had one Dick. Yeah. That, uh, we had Dick too, more than once. And we had Maud and Kate and Molly and Jack. And um, we had old Bill. And then we had the one we named after the neighbor's girl. And uh, her, her, her name was Shirley. And, and I always got in trouble for yelling Shirley when we'd drive by their farm. across the road. John Levin's is 240, and that was a big farm. Yeah, and you go to breaking up new ground that hadn't been broke up. Took a lot of horsepower to get that turned over. And they tried, first of all, with uh, cast iron plows, which didn't scour. Yeah, they had the steel breaking plow. It had a longer mold board, so it tipped it on over more. You see these short ones, your sides was so tough, they'd tip back on you when you've got a crop residue of corn or wheat or whatever the crop was that you're growing. Uh, that's quite different. If you went to plow in the spring and that wouldn't scour, why, well, it'd do an awful poor job. Just root along like an old hog, you know. For years and years, uh, you see, we we had a thing about uh, whether or not a guy was a good farmer. And one of the criteria was how clean he could plow his field, which meant he wanted to plow all of that stuff under. And they worked quite hard at this. So we used to have an oil can on the end of the field and oil them for the night in case it would rain so they wouldn't catch a uh, little rust and they didn't want to scour so good. 14-inch plow was generally pulled by a team of horses, and 16-inch required three horses. That was customary. Of course, about the time you started to move fairly well, you know what happened. You hit a rock. <laughs> we dug that out, then you'd keep on going. I uh, furnished a team and picked up rock. If you worked hard, why... I made 50 cents a day at that time, so I thought I was really rolling in the money. We'd get the old stone boat loader, and then we'd head for the fence line where we had a rock pile. Before my time, that was the main crop, fall wheat. Had to just fence your crops, and that was all, because you couldn't fence your whole farms, because everybody had open range, they let their cattle run. They branded them all, of course, at that time. They would graze the cattle. That was done a little bit in my days. Then older stories about all the livestock to be cut up and everything else by that barbed wire. It wasn't going to be, but... It was, anyway. The rhythm a person uses when they're using the scythe is 
beautiful to watch. Dad had a hand corn planter. He stick them, boom, boom. I remember the little 12-acre field. And he went out and marked. He planned that whole thing by hand. I'll never forget that. And he told me that that's the way all the corn was planted by his father when he first arrived here. I remember him telling about those planters, that they would jerk it every time to try and get them straight crossways so they could cultivate both ways. But after... I went to planting why we had the wire. And of course that was kind of a skill too that you had to know enough how to set them or you'd have it so crooked crossways you couldn't cultivate. Uh, you look at his planter wire, you could tell. Oh yeah, you could pretty well tell the neighbor by how he planted. Yes, uh, we used to watch that quite a bit, who had the straightest rows and uh, cross rows, and uh, they took pride of that. Sometimes at the gathering, they would argue over that, who's got the straightest rows and cross rows and so forth. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Come on. We'd watch that all the way to town. And you'd always hate it if you got your rows crooked and somebody else would be going by and look at yours. <laughs> Yeah. Dad's were never straight. Dad claims he got more corn per acre that way. <laughs> Very few farmers say they cultivate corn. They plow corn. See, my dad thought the horses are too tired, and then we can walk. <laughs> One of the big problems that you had early was weed control. Now, uh, with a check row approach, then you could cultivate in both directions and get between the plants. You always, when you went crossways, you were sure to go lengthways again to leave it. You had to go three times or five times. Otherwise, when you pick corn with your wagon, you'd go up and down the row, you'd go bumpity bump over your rows, you see. <laughs> Fear that old boar bar. Disengage me if it gets plugged and all this business. And um, we were frightened because um, we knew the damage that could occur. I'd rake the dump rake and you dump it in rows. Then again, we well, had to watch so you got them straight. And, and then you'd turn the straddle those rows and dump it into piles, haycocks we call them. Daddy, he would pick up that bunch mostly in one heap. I think one of the heartbreaking things is to have it down and look over, see a great big black cloud coming up and it would soak it. So you go out after it dried up a day or so later and soaked again. Sometimes we hauled in red clover stems <laughs> what any leaves. You knew then that things weren't going to be good that winter. Right after the first world war, we bought a sidelary rake and a hay loader. Before that, we pitched it by hand. <laughs> One time, I loaded up a 
a bunch of bumblebees, and that wasn't so good either. <laughs> I sure piled the hay on them pretty fast and got them tromped down. Yeah, that's just always my wife's job is to pull up the hay. <laughs> Why she had to hook, it, take a hold of the rope and hold the double trees up so they wouldn't step over them when she turned around. Or that's the hardest work I done. <laughs> Dad would send us up, one of us up in the hay mow, and uh, my brother used to hey, he'd find a window where he could peek out and get a little air, and he'd wave at me. And Dad would let a yell out, are you mowing that back? I can remember that. And he'd be waving at me. Generally, so oh, it's first, the disc got in twice. I can still remember getting the disc out. Dad sharpened his own disc blades. See, but the little disc, they didn't cut in so deep, they didn't even cut out all the stumps. We generally disc it uh, twice and drag it once. And then uh, Daddy would sow the small uh, seed. He thought it would get too deep, it wouldn't come up. It was mostly Timothy seed and little clover. Yes. Yeah, every year, see, I would put in oats and then uh, and grass seed harvest my oats and the next year i'd have the hay by rotating that way part of your farm was under sod all the time the daisy reaper you bunched it up on the platform and now this would kick off just bunches and, and this led then to a tying device and the old binder come out of that. My brother and I tried to shock fast enough, so we try and keep up with the binder. And my dad says, I don't think you can keep up. We says, when you got done, we'll be picking the last one off of the bundle carrier. <laughs> but one thing we never finished ahead of him. <laughs> you look down the row and set them straight. You had pride in your work, and then you'd cap them with the Heads hanging to the north so the sun didn't shine on us much. We'd uh, put the horses in and uh, eat supper, milk the cows. Still a little daylight left, go out and shock. I could hardly walk. In early times, they had uh, a turntable and then you used horses. Uh, and you could use these then to uh, pump water with them. You could use a, a threshing device. Yeah. Know. We done a lot of reshocking. Depends what kind of weather it was. Dad did very little shocking, but he inspected shock. like all month of August it was trash and rain. It was really a social affair. Sometime they had to go across the rivers because the uh, uh, bridges wouldn't hold them. That's pretty big machines. And then if one of them got stuck, it was quite a job. Well, we'd start just as soon as the dew would get off in the morning. You, you got up early, milked your cows, got the neighbor, because uh, it had a long day. We made about four o'clock in the morning to get the steam up, you know. You'd keep your middle low so your load tipped in all the time. And that way your bundles wouldn't slip off. And then when you got finished your load, you'd put a few rows down through the middle and tramp them good so they stayed on. Well, sometimes, you know, 
he lost bundles and I even seen when they upset it that was generally some hired man that somebody needed help and they hired him and but uh farmer it caught a big disgrace if you'd lose bundles or upset it. <laughs> yeah, if it was a side wind, those smarty Alex, they would try to get on the clean side. My dad, he didn't want nobody to touch his engine. He, he was very uh, contented there. Six o'clock in the morning, you'd start your pies. We used to dress our chickens before we had dinner. And that was a big job. I always water them before and after they'd eat, so they didn't drink too much each time. Sometimes some kids would splash one on the other, then the other one would splash it back on him, and that was generally those kind of naughty ones. And I went through three tables one time. And I didn't do it again because everybody made so much fun of me. Three pieces of pie, I can remember that. Well, we saved a little bit here for you, Bill. Thanks a lot. <sighs> How much is left out there in that each bill? Oh, about a third or four. You supposed to be going to get done with it then? Sure, five, five thirty. We can move on down the road. If an engineer, Sheldon would keep a longer noon hour. He thought the engine was his, and the pressure was the other two guys. Headed way up the bushel, made a dump, and then that let auger out, made two dumps to the bushel. Unloading, the heads now had to be all in the same direction. There was a finesse here. I think the dirtiest job that uh, on the whole crashing ring was the man that built the stack. Well. Crashing, no matter how you looked at it, was a little dirty. But I've always marveled at, uh, we had one neighbor, he was fresh. He never seemed to get dirty. Uh, the, the old guy that I worked with uh, had a great deal of pride in his ability to build a load of bundles better than anybody else. It was a great satisfaction that last round. More than once, I had the old coop. I would catch few chickens and went to town and bought the groceries and had few cents left. We'd buy nine sacks of flour at a time. It lasts quite a while, but other times it was just a few groceries you'd buy the egg money. We had a neighbor that hauled all his manure in the first 12 rows along the road. That was his tall corn, but you could look it over that and see some yellow little short ones half as big. Half mile rows with a sulky and three old horses, you didn't make much of a mark. I'd plow all day long and peek out there the next morning. I, I, I don't think I did anything. One job I liked the best of any was plowing. I drove three horses in front and two behind. If you was leaving it over winter, put some axle grease on it. 
The beauty horse used to come to our farm. There was a guy up here who had a, several stallions. You had your own feed and you raised your own horsepower. three times a day always, rather than to have a bigger box. Because when you go to picking over 100 bushel a day, that's a lot of throwing ears. And all oh, a foot higher make a difference. My horses very seldom would walk too far away. Once in a while they got naughty, you have to run up to them and jerk them a little bit on their lines. Because I shoveled off a, a triple box load, see how quick you could start at the back of the load and never stop until you got to the front in seven minutes. <laughs> no load. that off for noon and go in and eat. Pick till it was dark. The old saying was that the weather for corn picking is until Thanksgiving Day. fed the hogs, the bigger hogs, out in the hog yard, where then you had to go out there and pick up cobs. I always did when I was a kid. They made a hot fire, and they said a good cook could cook breakfast on three corn cobs. like we were always late for church. Three, two, shut up. You know, those were great days. 